All right, so we're gonna take a peek under the hood at the publisher, planner, and content library. So right now we're just in the main dashboard of streams. I'm gonna hop onto the left side and go into publisher. So once we're in there, um, you can see all of the networks on the left-hand side that you have access to. Um, so for example, I'm going to click on Hootsuite's Facebook page. And there we can see all of the previously published content and also content that is about to be published as well. Um, so one tip from our social team is that we always make sure that we're looking in week view of the planner. Um, this is automatically set up for the newest version of the planner. Um, if you want to go back into our old version of planner, which is now called content, you just click up here um, and then you can look at your scheduled posts where you can see all of your networks there. You can filter by your profile by clicking here. Um, and for example, there's our Hootsuite Facebook page and it will show everything that is about to be scheduled. Um, and also you can see what's been scheduled before as well. All right, so if I'm wanting to create a new post, I would click new post. And then here we hop into the new composer. And so for example, if I want to create a post for our Facebook page, I would click Hootsuite's Facebook page. Um, and then I would hop into our team's social publishing calendar. Um, we do publish quite a bit of content, but for example, if I grab um, this piece and then I want to schedule this tomorrow at 12.30 a.m. So this should bring up a preview and this is awesome. Um, it shows exactly what it's going to look like once it's published so that's super helpful for us. Um, on Facebook we take out the link so I would just delete that and it doesn't delete the preview image. Um, I'd hit schedule for later so tomorrow 12.30 a.m. and there we go. Super easy. Um, some really cool integrations um, that we use are if we open the media library, see here we have um, access to free stock images. Um, so that's really helpful. Um, I can search anything from, for example, if I search laptop, there's comes uh, a ton of different laptop images will come up. Um, another integration is Giphy. Uh, we're a big fan of using GIFs uh, when we interact with other people or on Twitter, it, it's a big hit as well. So it's super easy to search. Um, if I wanna look up for cat GIFs, I'll just <laughs> look up cat. And there we go, a ton of different examples. Uh, another integration would be the Google Drive. Um, so here, uh, we've found this to be extremely helpful as well just because we can access everything in our Google Drive without exiting Hootsuite. Um, so I'm gonna exit cat. Uh, so for example, we have a folder uh, with all of our social first assets included in it. And if I go into it, um, then you can see we have our own personal stock photos that we use on a regular basis. So I would just click into there. Um, and then, so if I want to replace this preview image with something else, I would just click on this stock photo. Um, and there we go, it replaces it. So I just close the media library and there the image preview has now been replaced with the stock image that I chose. All right, so now I'm going to highlight some of Hootsuite's publishing functionalities. Um, one big thing that we like to look at is looking at things that we have scheduled in the past. Um, so as you can see here is there's a green check mark and all of these posts are green. So for example, if a post unfortunately failed to post, um, we would then see an X mark and it would be red. Um, so we'd like to keep a close eye on this just because if our posts are failing to send, then we need to reschedule them for a later date just because this will affect our KPIs and um, it's really important to make sure that all our posts are getting published. Another really great functionality that we like to use is if we hop into the content, um, the old publisher, we actually use this quite a bit if we have um, an intern that's helping us out on the team and we want to make sure that we vet all of their um, copy before it's sent out. So we'll go into require my approval and I'm just going to exit out of Facebook because a lot of our 
uh, messages that require approval come from Twitter. So here you can see all of the messages that we can access before it is published and sent out on our, our Twitter account. Um, and then you can hit approve reply or you can hit reject reply and then you can also add a little note of why you're rejecting it and then your intern can then uh, adjust the image, um, adjust the copy and then uh, we can then approve the reply later on. So I'm going to hop back into the new Compose and some cool things that we like to use. Um, so let me just show you. If I type in hootsuite.com, we track all of our links by using UTM parameters. So this is all of our link settings that we have saved. Um, and if I want to manage them, I can show you an example of what our UTM parameters look like. Um, these are all of our past campaigns. If you see it crossed out like this, those are our archived campaigns. And the ones here, these are our live campaigns. So our always on content, um, you can see here, our UTM source is the social network, Medium is own social, and you can customize your, your campaign name as well. And that's how we track our UTMs. Um, if I was, for example, this barometer webinar, it's only running for the month of September. Um, once that's over, I can then archive this UTM setting so that it doesn't look cluttered and that we can easily find our other UTM parameters. So yeah, really easy to manage and to apply uh, as well. So if I want to apply the always on UTM, I would just hit there. So if I were to paste um, one of our blog post links here, I would then want to add our always on UTM parameter and I would hit apply and I would click the social network. So for Facebook, and then you would just see the preview on the right hand side over here. And there we go. This preview feature, it's a game changer in terms of knowing what posts will look like once they're published. Um, so if I exit out of here um, and I go back into Publisher, um, it's awesome that I can just click into um, a scheduled post. So for example, I'll just click into this one and you'll be able to see the preview on the right hand side here as well. Um, if I need to edit it, I'll just click edit and that will open up and I can quickly add um, whatever I need just here. And then I would save my edit. So another awesome feature in the new Compose is if you don't have an image that size properly, you can actually use the Adobe Creative Cloud to fix that. So if I'm wanting to um, choose an image for Instagram, I'll just look up that social network and then I will go into the media library. And so say for example, I want to, um, if I go into the Google Drive, we'll find our photos. And if there's a specific photo that I want to post to our team's Instagram account, I will just click here, select it, and then I will then go into Edit with Creative Cloud. And because it's on Instagram, I would want to crop the image into a square. Um, just select it, you can resize it, you can change the colors, there's a lot of different things you can do to edit the image, which is awesome and super easy to use. I would save that. And then I would then be able to create my message here and I could schedule my Instagram post for whatever time I would like. All right, so those are my tips from the social team. Uh, my name is Christine and thanks so much for watching.